Hi everyone, this is YML and today we are going to talk about what a multivariate normal distribution is together with the meaning behind the equation that describes its behavior. Also, I wanted to let you know that I've created a Twitter account for this channel and you can also follow me there to receive updates about the new videos I create. To understand the multivariate normal distribution, we have to firstly get a firm grasp of the exponential function because we are going to play with it quite a bit. I assume that most of you are familiar with what the exponential function is and how it works, but if you don't, I've put some links in the description that introduce you to it. In this video, I'll focus more on its behavior and, in a nutshell, what it does is to increase very rapidly once we get in the positive side of the input, while approaching zero as the input tends to minus infinity. One interesting thing that we can do with this function is to reverse the sign of the input and if we do that, then the exponential function will decrease very rapidly on the negative side and will approach zero as the input approaches infinity on the positive side. Another thing that we can do that brings us closer to the definition of the normal distribution is to compute the square of the input value. This operation attains two things. One, it makes the function symmetric with respect to the y-axis and two, the output of the function is exploding even faster. Finally, if we reverse again the sign of the previous equation, we obtain the bell curve, which many of you should be familiar with. Quite a mathematical miracle if you ask me, because you can apply such an interesting output with an equation as simple as that. And again, this shape is obtained due to the symmetry with respect to the y-axis. However, keep in mind that this is yet not the normal distribution and several more things need to be added to the recipe in order to obtain it. Firstly, we would like to have more control of where the center of the bell is, or the mean of the normal distribution, by shifting the x-axis. And how is this obtained? Simply extract the position where we want the bell to be, the variable mu in the equation, before raising the result to the power of 2. Then, maybe we like to change the shape of the bell. There are many ways to attain that, but the most simple and yet powerful method is to control the spread of our input variable by multiplying it with a constant. And, if we do that, we obtain the following behavior in our bell shape function. We can see that it gets either narrower or wider as we increase the multiplication constant sigma, or the standard deviation as it is known in the normal distribution. However, if we model the function in this way, we can see that the spread of the bell is inversely proportional to the parameter sigma. So, instead, we like the two to be directly proportional, and to attain that, we divide the input x to sigma. Another not-so-intuitive part, at least not for me, is to multiply the exponent with 1 over 2. I mean, I know that mathematicians like to multiply the powers of 2 with 1 over 2 to obtain a nice derivative, but here it's more than that. In this case, the reason is related to the inflection points of the equation or the points where the second derivative is 0, or the points where the curvature changes the sign. If we don't do that multiplication, then our inflection points appear at minus sigma over square root of 2 and sigma over square root of 2 instead of minus sigma and sigma. Which, yeah, it's nice, but to be honest, I don't understand why this is such a big deal. Anyway, the last building block is to normalize our equation and make it a probability distribution. Because when you integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity, we don't obtain 1, but sigma multiplied by the square root of pi. So we have to divide by this term to obtain a probability distribution. And thus, we have finally obtained a normal distribution. One thing that I found particularly interesting about this equation is that the normalizing term contains the standard deviation but not the mean, which makes sense because by shifting the mean of the distribution, we don't change its volume when we integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity, but if we change the standard deviation, then the volume under the bell curve changes. The multivariate normal distribution is just a generalization of the one-dimensional normal distribution that we have explained so far. So we can use mostly the same building blocks to explain it. The first part of the equation contains the normalizing term 1 over 2p raised to the power of d over 2, where d is the dimension of the vectors we are working with. And we have seen that in the one-dimensional case that this is equal to the square root of 2pi. Also, here we have the square root of the determinant of the covariance matrix. We'll explain in more detail what the covariance matrix is very shortly, but trust me for now when I say that this is just a multidimensional generalization of the third sigma there, the standard deviation. Actually, it is a multidimensional generalization of the variance, but the variance is just the square root of the standard deviation, and if you take the square root of it, you obtain the sigma term in the normal distribution equation for one d case. 
In addition, if you wonder why we take the determinant of the covariance matrix, it is because the determinant gives us the factor by which areas are scaled by this matrix. So in a way, it's a scalar measurement of spread in multiple dimensions. If this doesn't make sense to you, I have added the link in the description where you can get more information about how you can get an intuitive understanding of the determinant. Then, the square of the input in the exponent is done by taking the dot product between the transpose vector with itself. And, as in the one-dimensional case, we change the center of the bell curve by extracting the mean mu, which this time is not a scalar but a vector. Finally, the covariance matrix shows us the extent to which each dimension changes in tandem to each other. On the main diagonal, we have the variance on the dimension or how spread our bell curve is on each dimension. And in the rest of the matrix, we have the covariance showing us how each dimension relates to the other dimensions. We can see in the image here that when we increase the covariance, we increase the relation between our dimension, which means, in a nutshell, that if we pick a random value from one of the two dimensions, then we increase the probability of obtaining a value around that one on that dimension. Also, in the same way, when we decrease the covariance, we increase the chance of obtaining a similar value for the other dimension, but this time of opposing side. In addition, we take the inverse of that matrix, the equivalent of division in multidimensional data, in order to obtain a direct proportionality between the values in our matrix and the spread of the bell curve. There are many things to say about the covariance matrix, and I believe that this is such an important topic that it deserves a video of its own. So I won't go into too many details here, but I will leave a link in the description where you can find out more information for those of you that are curious. That was the presentation for today. I hope that you enjoyed it and please leave a like if you did. I can't emphasize enough how much this helps this channel. Subscribe to be up to date with any content and you can also follow me now on Twitter. See you next time. Bye bye.